Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to continue looking at bisection method in this video. This will be our last one for this method, and then we'll move on to another one. So on this one, we're going to go over the MATLAB portion. So I gave you this algorithm before. So remember, an algorithm is just kind of the general setup you would use if you're going to write this out in code. We're going to be using MATLAB. You could obviously do it in any other uh, code that you want. So this is what the algorithm looks like. All right, our endpoints, remember we need the interval limits. So A and B, we need our tolerance. This tells us how accurate we want our solution. Max number of iterations, this is going to keep us from going into an infinite loop, which we definitely don't want to do. Here is our function f of x, you gotta have that. Now what we're gonna get out of here is hopefully the approximate solution or if it doesn't work, you'll get some kind of failure message. Hopefully we won't get that though. And then the actual algorithm is shown right here in these steps. First thing we're gonna do is set our counter to one. We'll use I to keep track of how many iterations we've done. Then we're going to plug in our lower limit of our interval for A. We're gonna plug that into our function. After that, we'll go into our while loop. We'll get our initial uh, midpoint of that first interval right here, a plus b over two. Plug that value into our function. Then we wanna check and see if we're done. So you can check and see if your, uh, this value right here is equal to zero or close to zero. Or you could also check and do b minus a over two less than tolerance. So there's several different ways you can check for your error here, it's kind of user preference. Then if you're done, if you've met these conditions, you can output your X and S value. That means you are finished, and that would be your approximation. If you don't meet these conditions, then you're gonna increment your I value by one, and then you'll go through and set up your new interval. So remember for the new interval, you're gonna check and see what the sign is when you multiply F A times F X and S. All right, so if it's positive, then you'll do these. Uh, so you'll set A equal to X and S. Then obviously you take uh, that value, plug it into your function. So that's gonna give you this. Otherwise, B gets set equal to X and S. All right, so that is a brief rundown of that algorithm. This is the problem that we looked at. We worked it out by hand. We're gonna do the same problem in MATLAB just so you can see we get the exact same values. Okay, so let's go over to MATLAB. Okay, so here we are in MATLAB, and this is what my code looks like. Now, remember, you don't wanna just copy what I have. You need to really sit down and actually try to code it up yourself. If you actually do that, you will be a lot better at coding if you're not too good at it already. This is a great way to learn how to program. All right, so first let's set up our interval limits. So we got A and B. For this problem, we had zero and one that was given in the problem statement. And then down below here, I'm just creating a string so I can display this statement whenever we're done. So this will tell us what the interval was that we were looking in. All right, and then your tolerance. So 10 to the negative two, that's what we had in the problem. And your max number of iterations, I'm gonna set it equal to 100 because it ought to reach a solution by then. If it doesn't, something's wrong. We don't wanna keep going. Done, that's a variable I'm going to use. It's just gonna kinda be a flag. So let's set it equal to zero here. You'll see where it pops up again in just a second. Initialize our counter to one and then set up your function. So this is our f of x right here. We're using an anonymous function here. It'll make it easy to just call that function, plug in our values. And then after that, here is where we plug in A into F. All right, so this is our step one that we had in the algorithm. And then after that, you can see we just followed that algorithm. So here's our while loop. We wanna make sure we're less than the number of iterations. So remember our max number of iterations keeping us from doing an infinite loop. And we want done to still be equal to zero, okay? 
now create your X and S estimate right here. And then we've got uh, F and plug in X and S. And then after that, we'll have if I is equal to one. And the reason why I have this, this is because I'm going to create a table so we can save off the data. So that way we can compare what we have here to what we've got uh, the, in the problem we did by hand. All right, so this is just making sure this is the first time through. So we'll save off this initial data here. And then after that, let's go through and We'll check and see if we're done. So now let's see if the absolute value of fx and s is less than our tolerance. So basically this is step four. I'm checking to see if when I plug in my estimate into my function, if it's you know within our tolerance limit from zero, then that means we're done. So if we are done, I'm going to display this string I created up here and then right beneath that, I'm going to display my estimate. All right, now at that point, we're done. So I'm gonna set done equal to one now, switch that flag over. And then we have our else. We got i equals i plus one. It's gonna increment our counter. And then set up your new uh, interval. All right, so you just do that sign check here and you can see what we're doing there. All right, and then down here, again, I'm just continuing to save off that data into an array so I can look at it later. Finally, if i becomes greater than the max number of iterations, obviously the method failed, so I'm just going to display method fail. Hopefully you won't see this though, All right? We don't want to see that. All right, and one more thing I just noticed before we go on. If y'all look right here for x and s, I have a plus b minus a over 2. And on your algorithm, I have a plus b over 2. That gives you the same thing. I had used this previously in another code, and I just copied and pasted it. Um, and I didn't realize it was different from the algorithm. So it is the same thing as a plus b over 2. All right. So don't get confused by that. It gives you the same thing. All right, so now what we're going to do is run it, and then we'll look at the table of data and see what we get. All right, so we run that. Okay, and here is our answer. All right, so it tells us our estimate is 0 0.585.9375, and that's what we got before, right? We didn't work through the whole thing, but that's what we wrote down. So now, just to verify we were getting the right things before, let's look at this data. Okay, so this should match up what we wrote when we did example one. Okay, so if you look at your values, you can see that they are pretty much exactly what we had before. The only thing that's missing on this table is the uh, F of B column that we had on example one, and that's because you don't really need that to do the calculations. All right, I just wrote it out in the example so you could kind of see where all the values were coming from but it's not really needed by the code, so it's not in here. But if you look, all of the values that we had written down, they all show up right here, okay? So that's kind of how you can go about coding that up. And hopefully you will go through and code this up yourself and get it working. And that's it for the bisection method. So in the next one, we will start Newton's method. See y'all then.